Ooh, what is going on guys? It's your boy DPJ here today with another Destiny video and in today's Destiny video we're going to take a look at the Destiny weapon tuning update that Bungie dropped yesterday. Now, if you guys did miss this update and you guys can't take my annoying cracker voice, I will link the post in the video description so you guys can go through it and read it yourself. But there's some crazy shit coming and I just cannot wait for this patch to happen. Now as far as I know, I do believe it will drop just before the Taken King. But that date has not been confirmed. Hopefully it drops tomorrow, that would be absolutely epic. But there is a lot of changes coming to a lot of weapons. And in this video, we're going to go through them all. Now we're going to start with base weapon changes. And we're going to start with auto rifles. Now I'm quoting Bungie here. As a whole, auto rifles need to be re-evaluated from the 1.1.1 update. The goals are still the same for this weapon, but this time the approach centers on a higher base damage with quicker fall off. With 2.0.0, our sandbox programmers have granted the ability to independently tune range and damage fall off. This allows us to emphasize optimal combat range without violating some of the more intricate aiming systems that are tied into the range that. When the update goes live, damage fall off will be more obvious as shown in the following screens. Now you guys can see these two screenshots now. As you can see, he's shooting the captain doing 19 to the body, probably twice the distance. That 19 damage per shot to the body is now 15. So the fall off is pretty high judging by these two pictures. But obviously we're just going to have to wait and see and test it for ourselves when this patch does drop. Now their goals with auto rifles are as follow. Auto rifle is optimal at close to medium range. Damage, stability and range are tuned such that players desire stability for reliable close quarters damage or range for better accuracy and increased damage at a distance. Elevate auto rifle so they are a more competitive option in PvP and simultaneously more satisfying to use in PvE. Changes, increase base damage, start damage fall off closer to the player to emphasize its role as a close to medium range weapon. Small reduction in base stability, landing shots at optimal range is unaffected but repeated precision hits require more weapon control to land consistently. Boost damage by 10% against AI combatants. So we are finally getting the auto rifle buff. This weapon so much needed it really did. I mean I remember the 1.1.1 patch when the nerf dropped with auto rifles it did basically ruin them for a lot of people and it's really good to see that the auto rifle error may come back around. Okay we're going to move on to pulse rifles. Now I'm quoting Bungie here. Pulse rifles are strong right now in PvP. We want to maintain that feeling of raw power but introduce some subtlety to the firing mechanics. Base damage for the mid speed most common rate of fire pulse rifle is now tuned so that the victim's armour is the deciding factor. Base stability of pulse rifles has been dropped very slightly so landing shots is still intuitive but consistently precision hits will take more skill. Magazine size has been increased across the board to make them more efficient in PvE activities. Now their goals with pulse rifles are as follows. Pulse rifle is optimal at medium range but can still effectively engage enemies at close or medium long range. Rate of fire sets a pace for players to track moving targets and then deliver precision damage in bursts. Pulse rifles should feel strong in PvP but don't become the only competitive option. Additionally increase their efficiency as a PvE weapon. Changes Reduce base damage of the medium rate of fire pulse rifles by about 2.5%. PvP burst to kill or precision hits is a 2 or 3 depending on the victim's armor stat. Small reduction in base stability, a burst should still land all shots at optimal range but 3 precision hits will require more weapon control to land consistently. Increase magazine size on all base infantry stats. So pulse rifles ain't really changing that much. I mean, yes, they are still going to be an absolute beast in PvP. They really are. All getting an increased magazine size as well, which is going to be pretty badass. And I look forward to using my messenger, my three little words, and my one to three size G when this patch drops. Okay, moving on to scout rifles. Quoting Bungie again here, scout rifles are currently orbiting their sweet spot pretty nicely. We made a few changes to solidify their role as an optimal long range primary choice and to help create a delta between the hand cannon archetype. 
Gold scout rifles are the best primary weapon for long range engagements. Scout rifles perform best when landing paced precision shots. Rate of fire and optics are tuned so that scout rifles are a little harder to use effectively at close range. Changes increase base damage from medium to high rate of fire scout rifles. PvP does not affect time to kill in PvP on a guardian with full health. Increased magazine size for all base inventory stats. Reduced final accuracy when firing from the hip. Fast firing outside of ADS will be less accurate. Boost damage by 5% against AI combatants. Now to be honest, I don't really use scout rifles as a PvP weapon because most of the maps now are close quarters that we get to go on. I mean, you can sit back with a scout rifle, but good chances are you're gonna get shot up the ass with a shotgun, it's as simple as that. But hopefully, with the Taken King, scout rifles come into effect with bigger maps. But we're just gonna have to wait and see. Now moving on to hand cannons. Caught in Bungie again here, during the last set of changes we made a very small adjustment to initial accuracy range and damage fall off to curb the long range effectiveness of hand cannons. However, anyone who has still been cross mapped, zapped by a fawn or hawk moon knows this is still very possible. So we pushed this a little bit further. Landing a long range shot now requires slow careful aim and a hit at that distance won't deliver and the weapon's full damage potential. In PvE, the role of the hand cannon is very close to the role of a scout rifle. Hand cannons do slightly more base damage, scout rifles have slightly more ammo in the mag, but otherwise their functions overlap a great deal. To help separate these two, we made the range changes noted above, but also reduced magazine size on hand cannons, while simultaneously increasing the magazine size on scouts. This should help push these two weapons apart and make the choice of the player more interesting. Hand cannons do more damage up close, but with fewer rounds. Scouts with greater range and magazine size, but slightly less damage per bullet. Their goals, hand cannons are optimal at close to medium range. Hand cannons are optimal when shots are paced, but become less effective when fired quickly. Rewards agility under fire, precision targeting and snapshots. Hand cannons cannot reliably compete with scout rifles at long range. Changes, start damage fall off closer to the player to limit long range lethality. Small reduction in ADS accuracy targeted at making long range snap shooting less reliable, reduce final accuracy when firing from the hip, fast firing from the hip is less reliable, reduce magazine size for all base inventory stats, reduce base optics, zoom for all hand cannons, ADS now grants more width in favour of depth. So hand cannons across the board are getting a slight nerf, magazine size being reduced as well but I wonder how this will affect my ill will. I mean, on that bad boy, I've got final round and lock in the chamber. So if it drops it down to three bullets, shit, I'm going to be hitting final round and lock in the chamber bullets all day long. Okay, we're going to move on to shotguns. Quite in Bungie again here. The shotgun changes in the 1.1.1 hit range pretty hard. For almost all of the shotguns available to players, this felt really good in our playtest. Occasionally, a long range shotgun with the right perks on it would show up and push the intended limits, but they are few and far between. Where have you guys been? You're not seen the Foul Winters, you guys not seen the, the Party Crash, have you guys not seen the Matador 64? These things have a ridiculous range with the right perks. Now, quoting again Bungie here, until Lord Saladin started just selling Foul Winters Lie, the availability of a powerful long range shotgun that could be reforged until a perfect perk arrangement showed up, made this combination very prevalent. In the House of Wolves, we continued to allow reforging on other range shotguns. Soon after, what we thought would be exciting edge cases in our weapon population become the new normal. We are directly targeting the shotgun perks that push out shotguns lethality distance, shot package and range finder. The PvE boost to shotguns in the 1.1.1 was significant and since then we have seen groups of guardians gang up with their boomsticks and trivially roll through some pretty tough PvE encounters. The reward of gut blasting a hulking enemy is super sweet, but that close quarters action could benefit from a slight reduction in outgoing damage. Their goals with shotguns are as follows. Shotgun is the most effective at close range, which it definitely is, apart from the last word. Complement melee attacks and other close quarter class builds. Offensively closing on an enemy with a shotgun is a risk reward timing game. 
curb shotgun effectiveness in PvE slightly to reintroduce some risk when closing on a powerful enemy. Changes, shotgun perks that enhance lethality at range should be less effective when combined with a higher initial range stat. Reduce shot package accuracy buff by 30%. Range finder adds a 5% base range increase on aiming down sight. Was 20, now it's gonna be 25. Reduce precision damage multiplier on shotguns by 10%. Reduce damage against AI combatants by 10%. So shotguns are gonna get a slight nerf. I mean, it was the range that was the problem with these damn things and shot package was the main problem. Hopefully this does do something about the amount of shotguns that are in PvP. Now we're gonna move on to fusion rifles. Caught in Bungie again here. When we hit fusion rifle accuracy in the last update, we saw a lot of players move to shotguns as their close range weapons of choice. For this update, we have preserved our original intent to reduce overall range, but have scaled back the nerf on close range fusion rifles to help them contend with shotguns in close quarters. Goals, fusion rifles are up to more like mid range, where targets are easy to track but they're not close enough to attack while charging up. Requires combat foresight and the ability to predict a target's movement to be successful. It should not be easy to find and build a fusion rifle that can achieve maximum range. Changes slow charging high impact fusion rifles have now decreased range values. Makes it more difficult to max out range for these weapons. Projectile speed for fusion rifles is slightly reduced. Emphasizes the need to lead a target outside medium range. Improve accuracy for short range fusion rifles. Reduce accuracy for long range fusion rifles. Now not that fusion rifles are my weapon of choice. I've never really enjoyed using them in PvP. It's good to see that they're balancing them out so that they can compete at close quarters with shotguns. Okay, so we're going to move on to sniper rifles and this is a biggie. Now I'm quoting Bungie again here, sniper rifles are playing into their intended role right now and we don't feel we need to change their base behaviour. However, one piece of feedback that the community has been very vocal about is the effect of the final round perk when combined with a high impact sniper rifle. Around the time of the 1.1.1 changes, we started phrasing this perk out on the sniper rifles and combined with their special ammo economy changes introduced by their multiplayer design team, we hope to see this perk lose its potential. The introduction of Charles of Osiris put us back on the spot to address this perk. To address this, we are changing final round to only scale precision damage for sniper rifles. This change fits the role of the sniper rifle for both PvP and PvE goals. Sniper rifles are optimal at close range and difficult to use for medium to short range combat. Sniper rifles reward from skill and high damage against precision targets. The final round perk on sniper rifles should require precision shots. Changes, final round on sniper rifle buffs precision damage only, not base damage. This change only affects this perk when combined with sniper rifles. So fuck, fuck yes, I can play Trials of Osiris without worrying about being final fucking rounded to my big ass toe and dying. This is a fucking great move by Bungie, it really is. So if you want to kill somebody with a motherfucking sniper, you have to hit them in the damn head. Now I'm guessing this final round perk will still one hit a blade dancer to the head, a radiance warlock to the head, a titan with a shield just coming out of his bubble to the head. I'm guessing that's what the final round will do. But I'm just glad to see it will not take effect when it hits you in the body. That is a great, great move by Bungie, it really is. Now we're going to move on to rocket launchers. Now there's not much to say about rocket launchers, you find a purple brick. You load up your rocket launcher, you blow fuckers up. We're giving rocket launchers explosion a tiny boost to blast radius to help out those hilarious multi-kills that rain bodies. However, the grenades and horseshoe perks have enabled an element of carelessness in PvP that we would like to address. While we definitely want the perk to grant you some slot while firing at a single target, it also needs to allow agile players the slim possibility of escape if your aim isn't true. Goals, rocket launchers deal massive AOE damage from a distance. Rocket launchers are optimal when placed in the middle of a group. Changes, slight increase to base blast radius. Grenades and horseshoes proximity destination reduced, which isn't too bad to be honest. Now we're gonna move on to exotic weapon tuning. 
Uh, Quart and Bungie here. Unlike the last weapon balance update, we are taking this opportunity to address a few of our exotic weapons in tandem with the changes to the base weapon behavior. Fair warning, some of these changes are intended to make you feel better while killing with the weapon and some are intended to make you feel better while being killed with a weapon. You know he's thinking about form when he's writing that shit down. Now we're going to start with the hard light. The hard light is a beloved weapon we want to be better. The new flexibility we have with damage fall off as an independently tuned value gave us a great new avenue to push this exotic a little bit harder into its fantasy. Changes, increased base stability to 80 was 65, increased bounce count for hard light projectiles. Hard light projectiles are not affected by damage fall off. Fuck yes, fuck, fuck yes. I've always wanted the hard light to be better than what it fucking is, and this change hopefully will do that. Moving on to the Necrochasm, we've heard and shared the resounding feedback for Necrochasm. Not only has this weapon been considered a weak reward for the momental effort it takes to acquire it, the base archetype high rate of fire auto rifle happened to be tuned down with the 1.1.1 patch at almost the exact time it became available. The following changes combined with the auto rifle base changes have made a positive impact in eternal playlists. I personally shrieked with joy when I got my first ever double kill in skirmish from a curse bringer explosion, changes to the necrochasm, increased base stability 260 was 40, increased magazine size, curse bringer perk will always trigger on a precision kill and curse bringer explosion has increased radius and deals more damage. Fuck Fucking yes, that sounds absolutely incredible. The Necrochasm, the Necrochasm, the weapon of choice in PvP. I can't wait for them times, I really cannot wait for them times I'm going into PvP. I check out people's inventories and I see they are rocking the Necrochasm. That sounds amazing to me, it really does. Okay, we're gonna move on to the last word. Now I'm quoting Bungie here yet again. The last word is our fastest time to kill primary in the game. No shit. The intent of this weapon was to always deal lethal damage up close and in the style while shooting from the hip. Right now the stability and range of this weapon has players reliably getting range kills while aiming down sights so we want to try and push this weapon into more of its intended role. Changes to the last word, reduced range stat to 10 was 20, reduced stability to 20 was 30, reduced effective range while aiming down sights, increased accuracy and precision damage MC scale when firing from the hip, fixed bugs with hip fire damage bonus applying incorrectly. Now that is the perfect nerf for the last word in my opinion, I probably don't agree with the reduced stability but I definitely agree with the reduced range and as long as they fix that damn bug I am super Super happy I really am. Now we're gonna move on to the biggie, the fucking fawn. Now the fawn has had an interesting journey, it started as a weapon that was perceived as an unworthy reward for one of the most contentious exotic bounties in the game and has slowly dug its way into players. Flesh is one of the most popular exotics among the destiny population. Now you can see by this chart that the equipped primary weapon population in PvP is fawn, 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 fawn all the fucking way. Last word and the red death but the fawn all the damn way. It's just crazy how much the fawn has took control of PvP release and I'm glad to see they are taking action against this motherfucker. Now quoting Bungie again here, we want to preserve the functionality that makes the Fawn such a compelling weapon but its effective range and lethality are one of the most hotly contended items in the PvP player base. The base changes to hand cannons and weapon stats address Fawn's range. Now changes to the Fawn are reduced base damage of the Fawn's mark of the Devourer damage over time to roughly one third of what it was in PvP and PvE. Allow DLT to stack up to five times across multiple landed projectiles. This is a net buff for Fawn's DLT but reduces lethality of the weapon in PvP. I'm just so glad to see that the Fawn has got a slight nerf. I mean it really does need it and hopefully, 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 hopefully PvP will be less populated by Guardians using the Fawn. I cannot wait for that day, I really can't. Now we're going to move on to the Hawk Moon. Now this is a weapon I'll straight up say I've not even used yet because obviously I'm an Xbox motherfucker. Yes I have Destiny on a PS4 but I haven't started to play it yet. But it seems as though they are making changes to the Hawk Moon. 
Now, quoting Bungie here, the elusive nocturnal bird, the Hawk Moon, has evaded many players for quite some time. It's one of the hardest weapons in Destiny to acquire, which probably makes it sting that much more when you're killed by it. When you get dealt a lucky mag and a bonus rounds all stack in one bullet, then that one bullet will one hit kill a full health guardian with a precision shot. Even through this is rare, just knowing it is possible tends to amplify the frustration for Hawk Moon's victims. So we're taking steps to help ease their passing, changes to the Hawk Moon, add a stack limit to lock in the chamber and holding aces so that only two of the bonus perks will ever stack on one round. This should prevent Hawk Moon from one hit killing full health players in PvP. Add two rounds to the Hawk Moon's magazine when holding aces is unlocked and lock in the chamber damage reduced by 3%. To be honest, I haven't become a victim of the Hawk Moon, but I have seen countless videos of people being one shot by it. Does this issue need to be addressed? In my opinion, probably not, but that's just my opinion. Like I said, I haven't fell victim to the Hawk Moon, so I don't know. Okay, moving on to the Icebreaker. Quoting Bungie here, we've done it all. Hunker down in the back of the map with your lunchbox, picnic table, and a sci fi paperback, and the Icebreaker. Kill all the enemies, wait for more to show up, kill those ones too. Put a few shots on the boss, make a sandwich, finish the strike, and then collect your reward. That isn't a Hawk Moon, and move on. The recharging ammo of the Icebreaker has become a staple for the PvE game. We don't want to completely destroy that, because a really great thing happens when all of a sudden you need Icebreaker, and you're still waiting on that next round to show up. In that moment, there is an interesting tension of play. You need to think about how you spend your next few seconds while it recharges. We are going to amplify that tension by increasing recharge duration by a few seconds. Changes to the icebreaker. Increase recharge time for the icebreaker rounds to one every eight seconds, was one every five seconds. So not too bad of a change, to be honest. I mean, three seconds longer per shot, 18 seconds longer to refill the magazine. To be honest, it won't really make that much of a difference when you pair it with a scout rifle when you're sitting back in them strikes. But that's just my opinion. Now we're going to move on to the No Land Beyond, my personal favourite weapon for PvP at this current moment in time. Caught in Bungie here, sawn off by most as a waste of strange coins, used as a joke weapon by people who want to stack the odds against their favour and every now and then it's a tool of destruction that wipes up a crucible match by a slick run and gun sniper elite is faster than you can say welcome to my youtube montage we built no land beyond for the quick sniping pvp minded player however as many have pointed out since it was released the weapon does not hold up in pve changes increased weapon handling speed for faster time to aim ready and stow adjust sight to fix overlap parallax issue while aimed Increase time DK of the master to 8 seconds, add an additional 20% precision damage bonus while the master is active. To be honest I would be happy with just the increased weapon handling speed for a faster time to aim, ready and stow. But adding other shit to the weapon as well suits me a lot because I absolutely love the Nolan Beyond, I really do. And that's in its current form, that's about this fucking buff. Now we're going to move on to the Black Hammer. Now this isn't an exotic, but it is treated as an exotic it really is. Quoting Bungie here, while technically not an exotic, this weapon was chased as if it were. Currently it's the only sniper rifle that is more capable of ending a PvP boss faster than the Icebreaker. Changes to the Black Hammer. Increase ammo inventory to 18 rounds. White Nail Perk now pulls ammo from your inventory. What the fuck? So basically no unlimited ammo for constant precision hits. That is a bit of a shame to be honest but I can see why they are doing it. They want people to experiment, they don't want people to be sitting back with their icebreakers and Black Hammer just picking off the bus of a strike. They want people to get into the battle which I cannot completely understand. It is a bit of a shame though seeing the Black Hammer ruined. Okay moving on to the Lord of Wolves. Quoting Bungie here, this weapon is a bruiser and doesn't need help. The only element that is lackluster is the recovery boost gain to allies from the Lord of Wolves perk. We had hoped this would inspire fire teams to stay close and attack and defend as a unit, rallying around their pack leader. However, the recovery boost doesn't do much to insensitize this, so we tripled it. Changes to the Lord of Wolves. Tripled recovery boost bonus for allies granted by the Lord of Wolves perk. 
Now the Lord of Wolves isn't a weapon I really tried out in PvP very often, nor in PvE. And to be honest, I can't really see myself in the near future doing so. But for you fire teams who love that Lord of Wolves, hopefully this does help you guys. Now we're now going to move on to the most exotic weapon in the game, which is the motherfucking Galahorn. Now quoting Bungie here, if Destiny had a nuke, it would be the Bellahorn. We definitely intended to have a high damage heavy weapon that was ideal for PvE destruction. What we did not intend, and what we unfortunately saw was a pickup raid in Nightfall groups, gay in participation based on whether or not players had this weapon. Galahorn was so strong that for many people he had become the only answer to getting through tough encounters and therefore and therefore they are less willing to spend time with other players that didn't have it. Now if you look at this chart you can damn see for PvE the Galahorn is just ridiculous. Everybody the Galahorn was just it's just it is the PvE weapon it really is. I mean I actually said on Twitter last night that I actually think this nerf is a good thing. It making it's making too many things in this game too easy and I do agree what I just quoted Bungie stated that there were teams looking for people Four Galahorns only. If you didn't have the Galahorn, you're not getting into their team. And that is a shame, it really is, because not everybody can get the Galahorn a hundred times. I mean, I've got so many people that follow me and sub to me who can't get this damn weapon. And it is unfair on them not being able to get into teams because they don't have a certain weapon. That sucks in my opinion, it really does. Quoting Bungie again here, we strive for Destiny to be a place where a single weapon or strategy does not dictate how or with whom you spend your time. In the new world, Galahorn is still worthy of its legacy as an exotic heavy weapon, but we hope it promotes inclusive behaviour rather than exclusivity. Changes to the Galahorn reduce damage of the wolf pack rounds, which basically pack the punch of this Galahorn. And it's a good move in my opinion by Bungie, it really is. But guys, that is all the stated changes by Bungie we are getting with the 2.0 patch. Like I said, when this drops, we have no idea, but there were certain people on Twitter last night stating it will drop just before the Taken King. The sooner the better in my opinion. Auto Rifles getting that buff, Final Round getting removed basically, Thorn getting that nerf, Last Word getting a slight nerf. I can't wait for the new PvP, I really can't. But guys, let me know your opinion down below in that comment section. Sorry how long this video was, just a shit ton of shit to get through. Thanks for stopping to the end if you did. Tell me your opinion on all of this shit or anything specific and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out until next time. Peace.